Hello fellow introverts, let's take a look at the techniques that I have used to successfully network with other people. And this will also delve into other aspects such as being confident in your communication and also knowing what to do, overcoming social anxiety if needed and building a meaningful relationships. So the power of soft skills such as communications, uh, teamwork, emotional intelligence are all critical for career success. And as the word says itself, it is a skill that can be learned and being an introvert shouldn't be an excuse as you can just spend time on developing this skill over a few months or years. So some common fears is that a network is daunting because you you have some fear of small talk or rejection. Um, but we have to acknowledge that networking and knowing the right people is essential for your career. So we have to reframe and networking as relationship building where you're trying to build up connections with people that have similar interests or goals and not just yeah, superficial contexts that yeah, are not really uh, useful in your career. So we have to try to find common ground with people that can help us out. And what's really important in a conversation is that we have active listening skills. So we maintain eye contact, we smile and we nod. We ask open-ended questions so the conversation uh, can keep going. Um, so there's not a simple yes or no answer to our question, but we show interest in the other person by asking uh, deeper questions. And we also try uh, to stay present when someone is talking. Uh, you can try to feel your feet or thinking about your feet when you're feeling distracted to stay in the moment. Uh, you can also do some breath work. Um, yeah, just inhale and exhale or focus on your breath. And this can also help you to stay present. Um, yeah, you can make sure that the other person is feeling hurt by asking yeah, further questions to clarify certain aspects so that the other person feels that you're interested in their story as well. And if you have to speak yourself, um, it's also important to use certain strategies to remove anxiety and be prepared. And as I mentioned before, uh, breath work is really powerful. And I would suggest that you look into the Wim Hof method. And this is a box breathing technique that allows you to control your breath uh, during a few minutes and can alleviate a lot of tension in your body. Uh, as introverts, we sometimes have yeah, tension in our body because we're a little stressed or uh, yeah, social situations are quite overwhelming and yeah, using the right, right uh, way of breathing uh, can make us more loose. Um, so using deep breaths can really um, make us calmer and prepared for stressful situations. You can also uh, look into using some warm-up exercises um, such as stretching, um, such as yeah, using a song that you really like uh, to warm up before you go into social conversations. You can also listen to comedy or interesting conversations to get warmed up and yeah, just be prepared for the social interactions. And if you're feeling anxious, you can always say to the person, oh, I'm feeling a little stressed out. It's like the first time meeting this many people or you can mention that you're feeling um, yeah, a little anxiety and other people will often understand uh, what you're going through. So you can always be real and, and mention it if necessary. Um, but having the right preparation uh, before you go to network events can already help a lot. Um, yeah, you can also dress up nicely, make sure that you're groomed well, because all of these will improve your confidence. 
You can also yeah, already prepare your speech or prepare the key points that you want to touch upon so you don't have to start from zero. And at the end of the day, it's all about practice. So you might um, yeah, fail a few times, but keep practicing and keep improving. So in terms of your digital presence, it's often said that you'll meet the right people when you do cool stuff. Whereas if you have nothing to offer, it's very difficult to meet the right people. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with bragging online or showcasing at least your work. And this allows you to show what you've done and other peers can connect with you based on that. And yeah, digital networking allows you to go at your own pace. Uh, when yeah, offline networking is too overwhelming, you can at least try that and showcase your work and yes, just send the link to other people, uh, send them a direct message uh, mentioning what you've done and maybe a link to your work and see what uh, feedback people have. And this can be a great way to uh, get started um, see what events other people go to and allows you to get a feel for what's going on and uh, yeah, how things are shaping up. So yeah, essential if you're attending an offline network is that you manage your own energy uh, because it can be quite overwhelming to talk to tons of people. So if you notice that you or running low on energy, you can always take a break, uh, go to the toilet, go for a walk, and even go home if necessary. Uh, if people are yeah, disrespectful or they're not allowing you to have your own space, you can always tell them, oh, I need a break or I need to go to the toilet and uh, go from there. Uh, if they really bug you, you can always say, um, yeah, I'm a little tired, I want to end this conversation and uh, talk to someone else. Um, having clear boundaries uh, can be freeing and uh, can help you to really do your own thing. So energy management is really essential because if you're tired, you're going to overthink everything and it's going to be annoying. So in terms of uh, building empathy and rapport, we mentioned uh, active listening before, and it's really important that you also remember what people said before. Uh, you can do this by taking notes. I have a notepad and also a file on my computer that allows me to see what people are interested in. And this also allows me to connect several people. Uh, for example, if I know that two people have the same interests, I can introduce them to each other and see what uh, comes out of it. And it's a very powerful way of networking uh, because people enjoy being introduced and you can add value in that way as well uh, just by making sure that you study everyone and know what they want, their interests, and then you can be the spider in the web uh, trying to see uh, the overlap and analyze what's going on and see how you can uh, make sure that everyone yeah, benefits from your presence. Uh, what's really important is also uh, studying uh, nonverbal cues. Uh, this might be a little challenging at first, but yeah, it can be uh, very useful at the end of the day. Um, what are nonverbal cues? Well, there's like a face um, expression, facial expressions better. Uh, it's also like the way people are standing. For example, if their feet are pointed away from you, it can indicate that they want to uh, move away and talk to someone else. Uh, it can also be the way they stand. If they're slouching or if they're um, yeah, speaking slowly, it can indicate that they're doubting themselves. And all of these are ways that are indicating that people are yeah, maybe stressed or not sure about what's going on. Uh, eye contact is also obviously a great indicator. If people um, yeah, look at the floor, they might be less certain about what they're saying instead of uh, looking into your eyes or looking at you. And yeah, you, you should try to pick up on these uh, nonverbal cues and uh, see yeah, how they 
affect the conversation and the interaction and yeah, try to make sure that you pick on uh, pick up on signals that indicate that people are uncomfortable or unsure because you can use this to assure them um, yeah that they're on the right track or try to uh, comfort them if needed so you could uh, study uh, these cues in more detail if needed and if you're struggling with this there are a lot of uh, youtube videos of uh, charisma on commands that can help you to see how these uh, work in practice uh, this can take quite some time to uh, learn or to pick up on them but over time you'll notice and see uh, patterns in them and it will allow you to study uh, the thoughts or the insights of people uh, even if they don't talk about them yeah one of them is for example if people are eye rolling is like an obvious one indicating that people don't agree with you or they yeah might even disrespect you if they do that um there are also other ones such as um yeah just being fidgety can indicate that people are uncomfortable as well um, they can also, yeah, just if they're standing closer to a person, it can indicate that they like that person. Um, what also indicates that they know a person quite well is that if they mimic the movements of the other person. Uh, for example, if someone is standing uh, with one arm on their side, the other person might copy it because uh, they know each other quite well. Uh, if they're smiling at each other, can also indicate that people are having a great time. So try to pick up on these cues and uh, this can help you to map out how people know each other and if they are um, getting along or not. Uh, mapping out the social dynamics and uh, who gets along and who doesn't uh, can really help you uh, yeah, to develop the right approach to talk to people. Uh, this can be quite overwhelming, so yeah, just try to be in the moment and have fun. And over time, you'll get to know people more and more. And you should try to see these uh, social dynamics or these uh, meta dynamics uh, evolve over time. But it's always uh, great to think about how people know each other, if they get along, and yeah, where they stand against each other. Uh, for example. Yeah, if someone's um, have had issues before or discussions before, um, this might show in their interactions and they might not get along in the future. So try to map out where people are in social um, hierarchy, because some people will be more dominant, whereas other um, people won't. So try to uh, see how people get along and, um, yeah, take notes and this can really help you to see the dynamics and uh, study them further. And it's also interesting to uh, follow up if people had introduced you or you had a great conversation, you can thank them and maybe also remind them of any action points uh, you discussed. Uh, it's possible that people are busy and they forget about your follow-up, um, but maybe you see them in the next networking event. Uh, obviously, you can always follow up a second time if necessary, uh, but always remain friendly and patient. Uh, people are busy and forgetful, so don't think they have bad intentions. They might just be overwhelmed and be focused on other things. Um, so a follow-up message or a thank you message goes a long way, but yeah, don't expect too much from it. People are chaotic, so things come up. And um, yeah, networking is also a little numbers game. So from time to time, uh, things go super well, otherwise not. Uh, we can also think about the Pareto rule where 20% of the connections will yield 80% of the results. So be patient when you network. And also remember that it's a small network or small group. So if you burn yourself by being arrogant or unfriendly uh, a lot of people will know about it and you might be outcasted out of the social group so try to be patient try to be friendly and 
just yeah see what um, what's going on and don't think uh, that people are evil. They might just be having um, yeah a difficult personal situation or whatever. And yeah, keep it moving and focus on the goal. Focus on moving it forwards and don't take it personal. Um, yeah, life happens, so focus on your goal and don't um, involve your ego. That's also very important. Um, yeah, yeah, as probably an introvert, you already enjoy uh, learning or self improvement, and this can really help you in an interaction because you might have picked up on a new idea or a new initiative in your sector, and that's a great way to start a conversation or going from there. Uh, what I really enjoy doing is if I see someone standing alone in a network event, I approach them, I say hi, I talk about the event or the environment and yeah, just listen to the person and then I introduce something I'm excited about or interested about. And if possible, I try to introduce them to someone else that I talked uh, before earlier. And this allows me to have uh, conversations with smaller groups and yeah, have one-on-one -on -one conversations instead of being part of uh, bigger conversations uh, that can be quite overwhelming. So um, as an introvert, I'm quite good at one-on-one -on -one conversations. So this is also what I'm trying to seek out. And then I can have yeah, deeper conversations and connections. And I can talk about what I've learned the week before. So it's a little challenging at first, but if a person is standing alone, they're obviously looking for an interaction so you can just uh, roll up, say hi, ask their name, ask what they're interested in or what they're doing and yeah, just keep talking and if they're interested, they're going to contribute to the conversation as well. If they're not interested, uh, they might not and you just uh, move along, uh, grab a drink, go to the toilet or whatever and talk to the next person. So don't take things personal, just Try to have a good time, try to have great conversations and yeah, don't judge people. Um, some people are just tired, having a bad day. Uh, keep it moving and try to find the meaningful connections. So if you have to um, yeah, talk in front of a bigger group, it can be quite challenging because you might be nervous when you have to introduce yourself. and. This can be quite overwhelming. Yeah, just be prepared to have a small speech about yourself, your name, your background, some key points that you want to touch on. And you can practice this at home. Uh, you can record yourself and use this to improve your speech or the way you introduce yourself. Uh, there are quite a lot of network events where they ask everyone to introduce themselves to the group. So if you know that this is going to happen, yeah, make sure that you have a prepared speech, um, that your voice is clearly, uh, that you have a clear structure in how you're going to introduce yourself. So don't yeah, get lost in the details, but focus on the main points that you want to hammer down and use these in your introduction of yourself or in your small speech. And yeah, maybe try to be upfront what you're looking for or what is currently interesting to you as this allows other people to approach you later on and yeah, look into intonation, look into having good eye contact with the audience and also having a little smile or having a great end of your speech so people remember you. Once again we can uh, use the breath work, if you're feeling stressed you can uh, Use deep inhalation and exhalation to calm down. Um, try to feel your feet and be in the moment. Uh, a technique that can also be used is to expand your gaze. So you try to look into the corner of your eyes and make your view as broad as possible, as this can help you to calm you down as well. It's one of the techniques that people use athletes uh, use to uh, remain calm under pressure. So you just try to expand your focus or your uh, vision as wide as possible and this can help you to calm down as well. So there are several techniques that you can try and see what works for you. 
So in terms of communication style, it's important that you are respectful to other needs, but also are indicating that you are certain about your skills. If you're looking at the ground, if you're mumbling or stuttering, it can indicate people that you're unsure about your skills or your ideas, and people might feel that, yeah, you, you're not as competent as you actually are. Um, so this is something that you should work on. Uh, once again, you can record yourself. And at the end of the day, it's all about practice, practice, practice. So as an introvert, it's easy to yeah, look at excuses of being more focused on yourself or your, your own thoughts. But we have to be upfront and just practice. And yeah, this will help you to be more assertive and clear in your communication. Uh, you can iterate and repackage your message in several ways. Uh, experiment with intonation, uh, record yourself and try to improve it. And this will allow you to be more assertive and more certain in your communication style. Um, it's often a little sad when people are less competent, but they are more convincing because they just, yeah, more certain of themselves. Whereas uh, very competent people are sometimes just doubting themselves and this makes people uncertain about their skills. So be confident in what you can deliver and practice your message. If you're really struggling with this, you can uh, join a local Toastmasters international group because uh, this allows you to practice your speeches. Uh, you'll get feedback on how you talk about yourself and your work. And yeah, this can really uh, improve your messaging and take it to the next level. So that's really something I suggest that you look into at Toastmaster International. And there's probably a club in your area and you can go there to a meeting and see what you can learn from other people in terms of communication skills. Yeah, and having uh, clear boundaries is also important. If people expect things of you that you don't want to do, uh, just mention it and uh, be firm, be friendly, but yeah, you're not there to do their work or deliver on things that you don't want to do. So, so at large events or conferences, it's essential that you focus on talking to the right people, and this can be done by preparing yourself. Uh, you can look at who is present and use this to yeah, get a meeting with the right people. Uh, this can be done online. For example, you can search on LinkedIn or Twitter and see who is attending the events and try to have a clear picture of who is present, what their background is, and study how you can pack package their um, your skills and your message towards them. Uh, once again, an event can be quite busy, so try to pick areas that might be more quiet. For example, certain rooms can be yeah, less busy and you can uh, go there if you're overwhelmed. Uh, you can also try to find a quiet space if you need to recharge or take a nap. And yeah, the great thing about conferences is that there are certain things or easy topics. For example, you can talk about the food, you can talk about the speakers, you can talk about the location. And all of these are great icebreakers because everyone is experiencing the same and everyone has an opinion about this. You can talk about how you got there, you can talk about the weather, you can talk about, you know, um, how you got uh, about reception, about the price of the tickets, about the batch you're having, about the goodies, about... There's so many things you're experiencing there together that are easy to open the conversation and go from there. And at first it might feel a little fluffy or small talky, but um, that's how connections are built. At first it's a little um, superfluous. But after a while, you can uh, go deeper. So yeah, you just have to accept that um, at first the conversations can be quite boring or 
yeah, quite simple, but that's part of opening. And uh, once you have opened the conversation, you can go deeper and talk more about your ideas and uh, further go from there. And as I mentioned before, try to find people who are standing alone, introduce yourself and and go from there because yeah going to a big group can be very overwhelming especially if people are already talking amongst each other uh, it can be hard to um, yeah get in this bigger group you can also try to talk to the organizers or people who are volunteering because it's their job to uh, help people there so you can just ask a little question or just um, make a statement about how beautiful the area is and, and so on. So, um, yeah, in terms of um, questions, make sure to also like add statements from time to time because asking questions uh, can be exhausting for the other person. So try to switch it up between the two. Um, yeah, once you have attended the event, you can keep the conversation going online. Uh, for example, you can ask their email address, uh, their LinkedIn, and maybe their Twitter or their X. So ask what people prefer and you can use this to follow up with them. And having a clear online presence can help with that. So make sure that everything is tightened up, that your LinkedIn has a clear message, that your Twitter has a clear message, and that you have a clear profile. Have a beautiful picture. Um, there are AI tools now that allow you to create profile pictures and those will help people to recognize you uh, because during an event, uh, people might be overwhelmed by all the connections and having a great picture will uh, make it easier for people to recognize you. Uh, what I also enjoy doing is wearing something that is very recognizable. Uh, for example, to every networking event that I attend, I wear red pants. And after a while, people uh, remember this because it stands out and yeah, they just remember me as the guy with the red pants who is talking about uh, yeah a lot of online marketing and uh, e-commerce. So having something cool, uh, it can be classes, it can be just a business card or something that makes you stand out um, offline can make it also easier to recognize you online. So in terms of uh, time management, uh, yeah, try to know your goals and priorities and avoid wasting time on just random chit chats. Obviously, yeah, when you're just starting a conversation, you have to start from there, some from somewhere. So, um, yeah, just start with. Um, like local or smaller ideas or topics and go from there, but try to screen out people so that you know that they have the same goals and values uh, because it's easy to waste a whole evening with one person uh, and that you later on realize doesn't add any value to your goals. So it's finding the balance between uh, being yeah, friendly and open to people, but at the same time uh, keeping your goals in mind and also managing your energy uh, because you might only have a few hours of energy to talk to people. So try to find the right people and, and yeah, mention your goals and have clear, actionable outcomes in mind. For example, you want to have a meeting with a person, uh, you want to solve a problem. Yeah, just make sure that you know what you're doing when you attend an event. As I mentioned before, I wear red pants to every meeting and having this personal brand has already made it easier to network because people um, come up to me after a while because they uh, recognize um, me from before or the last meeting. And yeah, just an easy way to um, get going again, especially if you attend a lot of events. Uh, yeah, you can build a personal brand. And there's also expands online. If you have a picture with yourself with your red pants, uh, people can yeah, just recognize you very easy and it's just part of my personal brand and makes me stand out. Um, yeah, this might feel quite tacky because you have great ideas and want to use these, um, but people are superficial and sometimes yeah, these things go a long way. So it might feel weird, but it works. So 
uh, we have to keep the goal or the end goal in mind and we have to do what works so that's why I do it once again uh, if you attend a lot of events I will run into the same people so yeah just be consistent say hi if you know them um, it might be tiring or annoying but yeah if you want to keep the ball rolling it's important that you um, be friendly every single time because otherwise people might think that you don't like them that much whereas you just start so just say hi if you people uh, know people from before uh, if you don't like people you can keep it short um, say no or find an apology or I have to go to the toilet or I have to pick up a drink and, and keep it moving um, but yeah it's part of a social group some people will be your favorites whereas others you don't like them but yeah um, just part of the game and uh, try to be friendly but also yeah, keep your goals and your ideas in mind and if people are not useful or not helpful or negative um, yeah just keep it um, short and, and keep going to the next one uh, there's also something I want to touch upon um, yeah just be positive uh, don't be negative Nancy because people don't like it uh, just try to find something that's good you know there's always something that you can be negative about or things that don't work out but keep them out of the conversation and try to pick something um, yeah that you enjoy also avoid politics or very controversial topics because yeah this is often not part of a work setting and can divide people so keep it positive keep it light and once you get to know a person you can go deeper but at first just everything is yeah from a positive angle if you're going to bag on other people or be negative it, it can um, push people away um, just compliment a person and yeah don't insult them or, or yeah have to strong opinions at first yeah one way to also be very um, yeah if you want to um, meet people at an event you can also volunteer because this will help you to meet other people that organize the event you can also meet other volunteers and this is a great way to get involved in a community at first because you're adding value and you're learning the ropes um, this is actually how I met a lot of people just by volunteering at an event just um, I was there in, or hour earlier and I made sure all the chairs were in place and I could talk to the organizer and get a feel for the sector and that organizer also introduced me to a few people and it was a win-win overall I might balk at this but it's a great way uh, to get started um, because yeah, volunteers will be introduced to each other they will assign talks to you so you can already warm up you can talk to people so it's a great way uh, to get started and uh, get accepted in a community yeah always um, try to think about what the other person is feeling um, and also about your other feelings uh, as an introvert we can sometimes focus too much on our ideas or the communication uh, but also try to see how people react uh, for example if you notice that they are um, looking suspicious for a few seconds or they're like frowning or they're like looking angry uh, all these micro expressions can indicate that a person is not agreeing with your ideas and yeah it can be quite challenging to pick up on this because you're so focused on your ideas and expressing yourself but try to pick up on uh, the micro expressions of people as well as they can indicate how they react to your ideas and yeah this can allow you to adjust your approach for example if you introduce an ID and the person is frowning you can ask them or oh, you don't agree or um, yeah just to refine your approach or your pitch so um, yeah just try to look into micro expressions as well and obviously this all, all um, train skills so don't expect that you can do this immediately but uh, try to uh, focus on one thing every event that you attend 
For example, in the first event, you focus on your anxiety. Uh, the second event, you focus on clear communication. Uh, the third one, on eye contact. Uh, the fourth one, you can focus on micro expressions. Uh, on the fifth event that you attend, you can focus on introducing people to each other. Uh, on the sixth one, you can focus on your personal brand, such as having a cool um, yeah, pants or, or clothing item. Uh, on the seventh event, you can focus on making sure that you yeah, find the right people to meet your goals and so on. So don't try to improve everything all at once. Uh, focus on one thing and one step at a time. So yeah, if a person says something, you should try to summarize their points and uh, see if you understood it correctly. And this makes uh, people feel hurt. Uh, yeah, for example, if people yeah, talk for five to 10 minutes, uh, you can ask them like, oh, did I understand this correctly? Or um, is this the point you want to make? Or And the other person can uh, use this. You can also uh, repeat their last sentence. It's also a powerful um, way to uh, make people elaborate on their points and make sure that they uh, keep talking and you are interested in their ideas, so that's really important. And smile from time to time, not long, say yes. And um, yeah, if you don't agree, don't be too aggressive. Uh, it can be tempting to call people idiots or stupid, but um, yeah, just try to find a friendly way to disagree. And if that doesn't work, just um, leave the conversation. Say you have to go to the toilet or grab a drink. You're thirsty. You need some fresh air. And uh, just keep, um, yeah, go away. Don't start fights or um, insult people. So. Yeah, uh, it's also important to recognize your own emotions. So if you notice that a person makes you feel angry or sad, leave the conversation. If you notice that the person makes you feel good, uh, try to um, connect further, but also don't be um, too overbearing because it's easy when you like someone to spend the whole afternoon with them. Um, yeah, leave some space for the other person to uh, do their own thing if they want to. Uh, for example, you can mention um, that you grab a drink and uh, see if they join you or not. Um, it just leaves the other person um, the option to do their own thing if they don't want to. Uh, because as an introvert, sometimes if you have a good connection, uh, we can be a little too overbearing or too intense. Uh, so finding the right balance where we leave the other person the option to do their own thing uh, is always great. So we mentioned a few uh, non-verbal cues before, such as uh, eye contact, uh, the body language, uh, posture, facial expressions, and a tone of voice is also an important one. So try to uh, focus on these um, yeah, in the coming months and write down what you notice every single meeting. Uh, it's also important to adapt the growth mindset, as I mentioned before. Um, yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but try to take action, learn from it, iterate, improve, and uh, you'll be better next time. Everyone yeah, has their ups and downs, and no one is perfect, so that's just life. You'll learn from it, and you'll do be better next time. Uh, group discussions can be quite challenging. Uh, you often see that big groups start to uh, divide in small ones. So keep this in mind. If you're uncomfortable in a big group, um, just wait a little. Um, try to talk to the person next to you or to listen into their conversations. But probably uh, the group will start to divide into small groups quite soon. And um, yeah, just stay present. And if things don't work out, you can just go to the toilet or do your own thing and um, just talk to someone who's standing alone instead. So I don't like to be in big groups because it's difficult to be heard. And I'm not that loud or yeah, great at captivating at the attention of a big group. So that's why I focus on uh, small groups or talking one-on-one. -on -one. So. So yeah, um, once again, 
it's important also to build up your uh, social network online, uh, practice uh, reading other messages in your um, community and use this to practice your own uh, writing and uh, social media insights. Um, and this can help you to become a person of influence in your group. And once again, if you're talking, uh, make sure that you're um, standing upright, you have good eye contact. Uh, you can use some hand gestures or touch. And yeah, this will all allow you to attract the attention of the other person. It can also be interesting to uh, be active in multicultural or cross-cultural environments. So you can uh, look into uh, cultural norms, uh, certain cultures have uh, different gestures or different um, yeah, meanings for certain words. So look into that and always uh, show respect to other approaches or other ideas and try to see the cultural nuances. Uh, you can always ask another person um, what it means or yeah, how they see things. And this will allow you to empathize with their approach and see uh, what it means. Uh, for example, certain countries uh, approach respect or a certain um, group dynamics more than others. So um, yeah, try to research this and look into this so you come um, over as someone who has empathy and know what's going on. Yeah, once you have a great connection, you can always uh, follow up with the person uh, meet them and it's also really great to have a recurring reminder where you get always uh, reminded to follow up with the person uh, because it's easy to forget about someone um, so if it's their birthday you can also message them if you see that um, they have a new work anniversary or yeah just a lot of random things that can serve as an excuse to reach out to someone and uh, plan a new meetup. So have a small uh, CRM or a small file with all the names of the people, um, the last time you interacted, uh, their goals, your goals, um, the next time we're going to meet. And this allows you to manage uh, your Rolodex or your connections uh, in a great way. And um, yeah, just make sure that you follow up with people and uh, build that long-term relationship because it's easy to forget about people and yeah, just um, a small mes message goes a long way often. And yeah, as I mentioned before, um, networking is a skill. So you just have to practice a lot. Um, you can write down your goals and reflect on what you've learned after every meeting or interaction. And this can allow you to uh, grow. Uh, for example, sometimes I notice that I'm a little fidgety and I just bring a pen nowadays um, because I have something to hold in my hands and I'm less fidgety. I uh, also notice that I sometimes uh, forget the name of people, so I try to really focus on that, uh, focus on eye contact, focus on having a great smile, um, yeah, introducing people to each other. So I try to see um, your areas of growth and uh, reflect on them after every meeting. And you can also, yeah, use an action plan and embrace your strength as an introvert, because as an introvert, you have often great ideas. Uh, you just have to find a way to communicate them clearly. And once you know what you have to focus on, you can create an action plan and go from there. Um, you can also ask people feedback, for example, if you have a great connection with someone and you can ask them, oh, um, I want to improve my social skills. Is there something I should work on or improve on? So to wrap it up, um, yeah, networking is just a skill. And as an introvert, we're great at learning and practicing. So in this course, I shared several techniques that allow you to improve uh, the skill. Uh, this can often be overwhelming and there will be a lot of ups and downs along the way, but just keep your end goal in mind and use this to fuel uh, your energy and your uh, ambition. And yeah, just keep improving, keep iterating and you'll get there over time. 
uh, just avoid insulting people or um, being negative and you'll be good um, people often understand if you're anxious so you can just talk to them and mention this and yeah just try to have fun try to add value to conversation and um, meet the right people and be persistent and all of this can be annoying or energy draining but okay um, once again keep your goal in mind and you'll get there uh, be strategic um, improve yourself and follow up with people and you'll do great so it's great uh, teaching you and i wish you a great day